This is a presentation of Universal 7, Governance and Management. Taming Complexity? Follow Ashby and Beer. The world has got increasingly more complex, faster and faster. Even 200 years ago, most people never left the town or city where they were born. Information was scarce and costly. Few people read. Things were simple or mechanical. Computers changed that. No, sorry. The printing press had started changing how knowledge spread, about 550 years ago. Then computers changed everything. No. Sorry, again. Cybernetics created computers about 75 years ago, and together with high-speed communications, changed everything. Social complexity exploded. Today, the word complexity, commands respect. Complexity even has its own pedestal. Many universities have elevated it, recognizing a complexity science. For petty reasons it seems, cybernetics has been marginalized, and relegated. Nobody seems to acknowledge, that cybernetics is the super science of interconnectedness, and the prime expert on complexity. Because of this, it turns out, we have two very different approaches to complexity. One comes from the Santa Fe Institute, with Murray Gell-Mann and Seth Lloyd. The other comes from two British cyberneticians, Ross Ashby and Stafford Beer. The Santa Fe Institute began studying complex adaptive systems in the mid-1980s, using computerized models, of artificial life. Explicably, the fans of the Santa Fe Institute's Nobel Prize winners accept what they say without question. In the Institute, a system's complexity is measured by the size of the computer program, or the number of bits of the algorithm needed to describe that system. Let's call it, a highly sophisticated definition of effective complexity, with very little practical use. In their very long explanations, however, they do agree that the size of a system is always relative to the observer. This is a typical description of a complex adaptive system, with different populations of agents, and each agent with its own set of tools and rules for using them. Here is a more complete graphical description with the components and structure. You get the picture. So, what have the cyberneticians been saying, all this time? Cyberneticians have studied complexity, at least since 1957. In his book, Introduction to Cybernetics, W. Ross Ashby gave complexity a technical name, he called it variety, and it means the number of distinguishable states of a system. He also discovered his law of requisite variety, a law of control that says, only variety absorbs variety. To be more clear, Science has always been about being able to predict, in order to control. And in cybernetics, in order to gain control of a system, the variety of the regulator must match the different states, or variety, of the system being regulated. For control to exist, regulation variety must absorb perturbation variety. When complexity is redefined and measured as variety, it is easier to make sense of complexity or to exercise control over a situation, without having to count every single possibility. As far back as 1970, Stafford Beer noticed Ashby's law of requisite variety as the equivalent of a Newton's laws of physics, applied to management. He then confidently assured us that complexity was the stuff of management. Management cybernetics is 100% Ashby oriented. Variety is a measure of complexity that makes sense and confronts complexity in a meaningful and practical way. Complexity is not about designing an ingenious computer program. Typically, Computers should be used as regulators, to absorb variety, and not to generate variety as a source of perturbation. For instance, computers should not be used to hack bank accounts or steal identities. There is a problem with having a complexity science, disconnected from cybernetics. Complexity science adherents, and creators of computerized models, are not aware of their role as observers. They are defining a system, that is not necessarily, the real-life system they intend to study. Complexity can be tricky. There are two ways of dealing with complexity. 
one is identifying a system correctly, and creating the best possible model. The other, is using collective intelligence, building consensus. Clockworks just won't work anymore to do any kind of science. To talk systems has consequences. The first and most important is that systems are observer dependent. Systems do not exist per se, they appear when an observer says this is a system or here is a system. Okay, now show us, why you say that. For that same reason, information is also observer dependent, as is complexity. You need an observer to point out a difference, to notice the existence of information. It makes little sense to talk about information being transmitted when there is no one to receive it. There is no such thing as information in a void. In the systems world, information is a relative concept. It presupposes the existence of an observer. With Ashby's complexity, you get a free pass connection to information theory. Not so with the Santa Fe algorithmic complexity. Ashby's path to information theory is amazingly simple. The number of possible states of a system is its complexity and also its variety. The variety sets the context that produces the information. No information is context free. A yes or a no do not mean anything unless you know the question, or context, or variety, it is addressing. Ashby confirms this simple explanation. The information of a message is related to the existence of a set of possibilities, variety of the system in question. Therefore, the information conveyed is not an intrinsic property of the individual message. Every state of the system may have a different probability. It follows then that the greater the probability of a given state of the system, the lesser the amount of information contained in the message. A message saying it is now raining has provided little information if rain had a large probability. The amount of information is proportional to its newsworthiness. Universal 7, Governance and Management recognizes four types of systems, simple, complicated, complex, and chaotic. Universal 7, is a model of a man-made complex system that is not exactly a living system, but a viable system, meaning a system, capable of having its own identity, and independent existence. Simple systems are obvious, and appear to have, a single mechanical cause and effect connection. A hammer, would qualify as a simple man-made system for driving nails. However, a hammer can be used, for other purposes, such as breaking a rock, or handled as a weapon. Complicated systems are made of many cause-effect connections, usually made of rules. They have a linear disposition, and a long list of components and can be described completely from beginning to end. Among the complicated systems, are many of the so-called alphabet soup solutions suggested by traditional consulting companies and adopted by their clients. That is the case of Six Sigma, TQM, BPMs, etc. Some require a good deal of training to make them work. Complex systems, are by definition, impossible to describe in detail. It is not because of the number of components, but because the relationships between the components are circular, dynamic, always changing. The best we can do about complex systems, is to create a model which preserves the main features, or mimics its behavior, as closely as we need to. Chaotic systems are the result of disorder. The simple, complicated and complex, can enter a chaotic state, where nothing makes sense anymore. Energy is unconstrained and information is absent. This classification of systems is highly standard and well established, accepted. Dave Snowden has created the Kune Fin framework to describe them and explain how to deal with each type of system. Sometimes instead of systems, people use the same distinctions to talk about problems, as being simple, complicated and complex. That might also make sense, but we are interested in the systems we encounter, or those we organize to reach certain goals. Within the complex system window, we find different types of highly complex systems, each with its own assumptions, and set of rules. 1. Living systems, such as humans, plants and animals, bacteria and microbes. These are studied by biology, medicine and other life sciences. 2. Complex adaptive systems, 
are made of diverse populations of autonomous agents. These, were first modeled, in the late 1980s, as was said above, by the Santa Fe Institute in New Mexico. They used high-speed computers, and software derived from the game of life, which was developed during the research of the atomic bomb, in Los Alamos. Example of complex adaptive systems, are immune systems, the international financial system, and many other self-organizing systems found in nature, and in human culture. 3. Viable systems, as described by Stafford Beer in the Viable System Model. The VSM is based on the neural system of the human body. The Universal 7 model is based on the VSM's neural system, that maps information channels and information flows. Universal 7 adds other features, that allows the explicit mapping a never-ending circular flow of energy, materials, money, and human resources. While the VSM can be used to describe the regulatory structure of a beehive or other natural organizations, the U7 governance and management system is meant to deal specifically with human organizations, both in business and government. The previous explanations are absolutely indispensable to understand one important thing, as in the case of water and oil, complicated systems and complex systems simply do not mix. They look different, their internal logic is different, and the method to study them is different. The complexity framework mentioned above is very compatible with Russell Acoff's classification of systems. To build his classification, he uses the presence of choices to determine the kind of system. Simple, mechanical systems, he says, are those where neither the whole or the parts of choices. The choice is outside the system, as for example a hammer. Next, are systems where the whole has a choice, but the parts do not. This is the case of a human being, who has choices, but the parts or organs do not. Social systems, are those, where both the parts and the whole, can exercise choice. Corporations, are a typical example. Both, the corporation and its members, have choices. Finally, there are systems where the parts have choices, but not the whole. An ecology is an example. Some complex adaptive systems are also examples. The difference between complex and complicated systems, is not considered by Akoff's classification. He does not accept viable systems, as a valid or useful criteria. Complexity, the same as cybernetics, is all about distinctions. Another worthy, and very helpful distinction, to keep in mind when you are taming complexity, is the difference between traditional scientific management, and management cybernetics. The first began far back with the Industrial Revolution, and flourish lately under the alphabet soup recipes. Management cybernetics, on the other hand, was developed as a subset of cybernetic thinking. Traditional management has resorted to computers to create highly complicated systems. The problem is that alphabet soup solutions do not prevent companies from going extinct. Management cybernetics uses computers much more wisely to recognize complexity and deal with it effectively. Feedback connected the world of the living to the world of the mechanical. Cybernetics is the science that built a the bridge between living things and physical processes. The creation of the field of cybernetics by Norbert Wiener, was the study of communications and control, in both animals and machines. The process linking both, that allowed the living and the mechanical, to reach an objective, was called feedback. Positive feedback, is present when an information process accelerates a system. Negative feedback, is used to control its performance. These two feedback connections, sometimes invisible or hard to identify, is what justifies distinguishing highly complex systems living systems, from highly complicated mechanical systems. The expansion of cybernetics, made by Ross Ashby, took this field of knowledge to another level, one that engulfs traditional science. Ashby's cybernetics is not only about feedback, or communications, or control. It is about all possible behaviors, coming from all possible, meaning imaginable, machines, whether they exist or not. It reminds us of the mesmerizing coverage of Euclidean geometry, where all imaginable shapes, 
and possible relationships between them, exist. Both Ashby and Wiener however, coincide to give meaning to information theory, later explored in more detail, by Shannon and Weaver's communication theory. Cybernetics was later used, by Heinz von Forster and others, to study the cybernetics of cybernetics, giving rise to second-order cybernetics. It becomes the expert not only on complexity, but on the crucial role of the observer in any scientific endeavor. It is then, that cybernetics became a new paradigm for acquiring knowledge. In classical science, the observer self-excludes himself, from the experiment. Second-order cybernetics recognizes that in principle all knowledge is observer-dependent. Ashby simply said it this way, a system, is a list of interconnected variables. It is up to you to prove those connections. In this way, the generality and scope of cybernetics is such, that it engulfs both types of knowledge gathering. Stafford Beer made this clear, when he described the cybernetic paradigm in the Monterey Tech Conference in 1990. So, the initial cybernetics is about control, and much about mechanical control and servo mechanisms, which is very engineering-like. But the second-order cybernetics is the one that has given birth to management cybernetics, because it deals with metasystemic controls. The first cybernetics has been trivialized and forgotten. The second, the people do not know about. That's the way things are. The fact is, that today most of all knowledge gathering is done through computer modeling, and belongs therefore, to second-order cybernetics. This is specially true of complexity science, one of many derivations of cybernetics whose proponents think they are flying free on their own. Only the truth sets you free. Thank you for watching. Please share if you liked it.